Hello, I am Virgil Babia from Camarini Sir Polytechnic Colleges, together with my co-researchers. And today, we are about to present to you our study titled Phrase Structure in Selected Philippine Gay Utterances of Vizcan Dust Top Grossing Films. In this study, we have two main objectives. The first one is to identify the phrase structures present in Vizcan Dust Top Grossing Films. And the second one is to determine the functions of these phrase structures. In the aspect of methodology, this study have employed the descriptive analysis and we have collected uh, the data from the top grossing films of Vizcinda, namely Ganda Rapido, The Revenger Squad, Fantastica, and The Super Parental Guardians. To analyze this gauge references, this study have used uh, sentence diagramming and we have employed the transformative genetic grammar as proposed by Chomsky in 1957. To determine the various phrase structures, the other elements of the sentence nucleus, and its grammatical and syntactical functions. In results and discussion, there are two main subtopics to be discussed. The first one is the phrase structure, and the second one is the functions of these phrase structures, and it is to be discussed to us by my co-researchers. Hello everyone, I am Shane Dayan Barela. I am going to discuss the phrase structures of Vaisgandha's utterances. First is the noun phrase. It can be inferred that phrase structures such as noun phrase in Vaisgandha's gay utterances must contain a determiner, an obligatory head noun, expressions classified as interjections, and modifiers. A noun phrase can also be followed by a verb phrase, adjective phrase, an, an adverb phrase, and a prepositional phrase. According to the study of Swart, Big, and Leach in 1975, they contend that a head noun can be supplemented by a modifier and a determiner in the construction of a noun phrase. Additionally, in the study of Ronald Wardo in 1977, he added that the grammatical formations of a noun phrase commonly the noun serve as the central element. Next is the verb phrase. In this portion, consists of basically a verb head, particularly an auxiliary verb, and an optional interjection. It can be analyzed that a verb phrase may contain a post modifier and it can be followed by a noun phrase, adjective phrase, adverb phrase, as well as a prepositional phrase. In the study of Carney in 2006, the intricate verb phrase is comprised of a core verb with all the complementary elements such as auxiliary, complement, and modifier containing adjective phrases, adverbial phrases, and the noun phrases. Next is the adjective phrases. Similarly to the previous phrase types, an adjective phrase must contain an adjective as a head and can be followed by a modifier, an adverb phrase, a noun phrase, a verb phrase, a prepositional phrase, as well as another adjective phrase. In the study of Nerdkiss in 2020, he further emphasized that the adjectives are most typically found closely in front of prior nouns they describe. On the other hand, an adverb phrase in this instance can be introduced primarily of an adverb as head, an unfinite verb such infinitive that functions as an adverb phrase, a noun phrase, and another adverb phrase. Adverb phrases may exist at many positions throughout the text, and they can modify a variety of other phrases and sentences and so on, as supported by the study of Spacey in 2015. However, a prepositional phrase in the gay utterances of Weisgenda does not have a preposition that functions as a phrase head. Mostly, prepositions modifies the other content words such as noun, adjective, verb, and adverb. A prepositional phrase can be introduced by the other elements of the sentence nucleus, including the noun phrase, verb phrase, adjective phrase, adverb phrase, and even a modifier. Furthermore, in the study of Arif in 2020, he explained that the prepositional phrase is an exocentric phrase that cannot be substituted by its head preposition. Adverbs are commonly used to substitute prepositions and their complements. It is vital to note that the preposition's complement can fall into one of many categories. An ad adjective phrase, a noun phrase, a prepositional phrase, an adverb phrase, or an unfinite sentences. Next to be discussed is the functions of the phrase structure. 
Hi, I am Ira Investment. I am about to discuss the function of phrase structures. As illustrated in a table, the noun phrase of vice gandas or gay utterances can function as the sentence's subject, direct object of the verb, subject complement, and object of the preposition. So this is supported by the study of Svartvik and Leach, 1975, that a noun phrase can serve as the object, subject, or prepositional complement or complement of a clause. In a verb phrase, verb phrase can function as a predicate, gerund, and this is supported by the study of Deodorico, 2012, that a verb phrase indicates two main functions, a predicate or a verb phrase complement. Adjective phrase, adjective phrase can function as noun phrase modifier, object complement, and predicate adjective. So this is supported by the study of Dixon, 1982, that Adjective phrases can execute five grammatical functions. So these functions are as follows. As head of the adjective phrase, noun phrase modifier, object complement, a positive and subject complement. The next one is the adverb phrase. Adverb phrase can function as adverb phrase modifier and adjective phrase modifier. So this is um, supported by the study of Tollerman 2011 that adverbial phrase headwords are typically adverbs commonly considered as a diverse class and included in the open class unit. However, their positional and functional ranges vary. So these adverbs are divided into several overlapping subclasses and any adverbials can coexist in any of the subclasses. So these adverbials can function as an intensifier, pre-modifier, adjunct, and so on. So depending on how it is being used in a sentence. So the last one is the prepositional phrase. So prepositional phrase can function as noun phrase modifiers, verb phrase complement, and adjective phrase complement. So it can be generalized that prepositional phrase in vice gandas gay utterances consists of three main functions, namely noun phrase modifier, verb phrase complement, and adjective phrase complement. So according to the study of Putri and Sharif 2019, a prepositional phrase is a noun group that includes a prepositional phrase. That is, prepositional phrases typically commence with a preposition and end with a head noun or pronoun. Hi, I am Jerry Orinas and I am going to discuss to you the conclusions and recommendations of this study. Conclusions It can be concluded that gay utterances of vice ganda are composed of various obligatory sentence nuclei such as noun phrase, verb phrase, adjective phrase, adverb phrase, prepositional phrase and its element can coexist in any of the phrase types. The syntactical structure and phrase heads of dominated primarily by the noun phrase, verb phrase, adjective phrase, and adverb phrase respectively. Some of the gay utterances of vice ganda show similarity in the syntactical structure of the English language following the SV pattern. The data shows that various phrase structures such as noun, verb, adjective, Adverb and prepositional phrase contains distinct functions. The tense of the verb is formed by putting an affix by conjugating particularly the prefixes pa, mag, maka to the principal form of the verb to formulate future tense contemporary to the English language. The tense is created by putting modal auxiliary verb. An interjection can be placed before or after the sentence nucleus and it usually acts similarly to the syntactic behavior of the adjective and adverbs. Adjectives and adverbs are more flexible and movable in any part of the sentence either in the beginning, middle, or end. The gay term of vice ganda usually acts as an expression, a noun, an adjective, a verb, or adverb. Recommendation Phrase structure rules must be studied further mainly when conducting an in-depth analysis of the Philippine gay utterances and mastery of the grammar is an advantage. Having sufficient knowledge about syntax and familiarizing topics such as reading from reliable sources and publications is highly recommended. Other components of linguistics such as phonology, morphology, semantics, and pragmatics may be conducted further to comprehend the grammatical structure of the gay utterances. Lastly, the gay language should be bridges with the social and cultural use to bring out its significance in the building of gender development. Workshops, seminars, or refresher course may be given to the language students, particularly on grammatical theories and comprehend the various syntactic features of the gay utterances. That ends our presentation. Thank you for listening.